Hey everybody, this is the cell and the cell transport review for our upcoming test. Um, this will hopefully, if you follow along in your notes, help you out a little bit with our cell notes. Let's start with the organelles and structures to know about the cell. So, nucleus, mitochondria, ER, Golgi apparatus, cilia, flagella, ribosomes, vacuoles, lysosomes, cell membrane, chloroplast. All right, so all of these will be very clear to you after you do your project, but I'll go through them really quickly. The nucleus controls all cell functions. Mitochondria pr um, provides energy for the cell when it burns glucose. Uh, the endoplasmic reticulum, or the ER, uh, packages proteins and materials, uh, also modifies proteins. Uh, the Golgi apparatus is totally the UPS, or mailman, of the cell. It transports stuff in and out of the cell. Cilia flagella are used for movement. Cilia are little hairs. Flagella, flagella, ah, flagella is a tail. Ribosomes produce proteins for the cell. The proteins um, that uh, ribosomes actually can be on the ER or floating around the cell. Vacuole storage. Lysosomes break up molecules. They're sort of like the stomach of the cell. They break stuff up. Cell membrane uh, protects the cell, but also decides who enters and who exits. And the chloroplast, only found in plants, is the site of photosynthesis. So, let's talk more about how, because the organelle stuff you're really going to learn when you do your project and review yourself. I want to explain the stuff we talked about um, when stuff enters and exits the cell. So, that's a cell. What materials need to enter exit? The stuff that needs to enter exit is water. Carbon dioxide, oxygen, waste, nutrients, all these things either need to enter or exit. Now think of the cell membrane as a bouncer. The cell membrane is selectively permeable or has selective permeability. This is the ability of a membrane to allow or block movement through it. So the membrane decides who's invited to the party. Now the surface of the cell membrane is sort of like a basketball. There's all these little dimples, and each little dimple is a phospholipid. A phospholipid is a tiny little ball with two tails, and they all hang out together in a double layer. Now in the cell membrane, there's stuff embedded. That means there's in stuff inside the cell membrane. Those beans you see, those purple things, are proteins. And those proteins are protein bridges. Um, larger molecules pass through the protein bridges. Smaller molecules like glucose, water, carbon dioxide, uh, and oxygen pass through, um, right through the little phospholipids. They don't need the protein bridges. All right, entry and exit of molecules occurs a couple different ways. The first one is endo, endocytosis or exocytosis, and this is when very, very large molecules need to get in. Now, how is that molecule going to get in there? Now, the cell membrane can't open up because all the contents of the cell would spill out. So what happens is the cell membrane actually sort of gulps, envelops, engulfs, and actually makes a vacuole in there. That's called endocytosis, okay? Now, the uh, macrophages are our white blood cells that perform uh, endocytosis. They actually eat bacteria or our damaged cells. Um, and amoeba was the protist that we used as an example of um, a single-celled organism and the way it eats. So this is sort of what endocytosis looks like. The cell membrane will wrap around some sort of particle and then fuse, and you end up with the, the particle inside the cell as a new vacuole. Number two, diffusion. Diffusion is the automatic movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Concentration is how much stuff there is in a solution. So, in this cell, there's more concentration on the outside of the cell than the inside. So stuff will move, in this example, inside the cell. The right picture you see is a region's question. Will the cells move to the right or to the left, the little particles? They will move to the right. Diffusion looks like this. Stuff will move into the cell, as you see there, okay? Because there was more stuff on the outside. Molecules will move from high to low. Active transport. This is the opposite of diffusion, and it's low to high concentration, but requires energy. That's the bad thing. 
So it's, this is where cells need to push something out. Active transport. What would it look like? Would it be these particles in or the little ones out? What do you think? Well, it's the little ones out because that requires energy to happen. So what am I? Whoa. Whoa. That was diffusion, high to low. Number four, osmosis. Osmosis is the movement of water through a cell membrane. Now, sometimes if there's a concentration of molecules that are too big to move through a membrane, water will move, not the molecules. That looks sort of like this. If you put a bunch of salt outside of a cell, well, the salt drains the water out and uh, shrinks the cell. And another famous example, one of these fish needs to drink all the time, and one of them has to urinate all the time. Now, the fish on the left is a sea-dwelling fish known as Nemo, and the one on the right is a goldfish that hangs out in freshwater. So who do you think needs to drink, or who do you think needs to pee? Hmm, think about it. The answer? Drinks! Peas! Now let me explain. A freshwater fish has a higher concentration of stuff inside of it than the water around. So water always moves to where there's more stuff. So this fish is always filling up with fresh water. So it has to pee to relieve that water going in. As opposed to the saltwater fish has more salt on its, around its environment than salt inside of it. So what happens to it is water totally moves to where there's more salt. So water always empties out of this fish, so it has to drink all the time. Got it? Got it? Good. Okay? Good luck, guys.